Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at a Nintendo GameCube. So what is wrong with the GameCube you may ask? If we power it on, it works perfectly fine. Um, as you see over there in the background, power screen comes up fine. Uh, but if I open the drive and I put in a copy of Pinkman, which is apparently the only game I have, we will see in the corner over there. that it's gonna error out. So I'm assuming it cannot find the disk. Um, through the power of the internet, I have found that just like in my previous video with the original Xbox, we can recap the drive. So I went to the good folks at console5.com and I got me a Nintendo GameCube uh, optical drive SMD cap kit. So it's just like a few SMD caps. That's what I got in the pack. And I also got me a, I don't know what this is, a tongue scorchers. I'm assuming it's like a, like a hotter candy. So basically what the plan is today, um, we're going to open this drive up over here. We're going to open this bad boy up and we are going to recap it. Um, I'm gonna recap it. I'm going to pot tweak it after I recap it to just recalibrate the pot back down to what it should be, whatever range that should be. And hopefully that'll get it going. So from here, we're gonna set you guys up um, and we're gonna take it apart and just kinda go through the process together. So yeah. While we do this, I would like to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. From prototyping to production, PCBWay delivers top quality printed circuit boards with precision and speed. Streamline orders, limitless possibilities. Whether you're a pro or a hobbyist like myself, PCBWay takes your projects to new heights. Elevate your designs today with PCBWay. Start now by visiting PCBWay.com. Alrighty, so we're down to the disk drive. That actually was pretty simple. I expected it to be a lot more difficult. I'm not sure why. I guess I'm used to the like PS3s and stuff. But I guess from here, I'm just taking out these four screws on the bottom. Alrighty, and this is the um, caps that we're talking about. So we have, as you see, a bunch here, a bunch here. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your corresponding caps. So like this one is 6.3 volt, probably uh, 224 volts. So you're just gonna kinda match them up. And that's what's in this kit. And you're gonna put them all down and you're gonna have a good old time. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, since these are surface mount, you could probably do it two ways. You can like hit it with some solder on each side and like boop, 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 lift it off. You can use hot air and probably also lift it off. Uh, we're gonna try the soldering method first with the iron and the flux and the solder and see if it comes off. And if it doesn't, then I will resort to hot air. So we're gonna do that now.
got all the capsules. Um, next up is we just put the caps back. So I'm gonna solder them back on. All I'm gonna do is line them up and hit each side with a little bit of a little bit of solder, and that'll be good to go. That's that. So yeah, let's get going. Okay, and there we are, uh, fully recapped. So I'm just gonna scrub up the board, clean it up, and we will place it back in the board once we're done. Okay, so now that we have it back together and recap, I want to check the poten potentiometer. Basically what we're doing is we're looking at the square. I'm not zoomed in because you ain't going to be able to see this because I still don't know how to do it. Uh, via Bluetooth, so we're going to, there's two points on the right side. You're going to do the bottom point on the right and the other side with your ground. And we are getting 203.9 at 204. So I want this to be, I think it's anywhere between 250 and 420, 4 something. So I'm going to screw this to the right that way. Uh, we're going to try to bring it up a tad bit. And you want to go very, very little because a lot will bring it crazy high. Let's see what we're at. See, I'm at 306. I want to bring it just a tad bit back. Two forty-six. I think that's fine. So I'm gonna leave it there. Now I'm just gonna put it back into the console itself and try. And hopefully it will work. If not, uh, I'm just gonna raise that up until it works. But you know, we'll still be in range. So let's put it back together. Alrighty, and here she is put back all together. So I'm gonna press the power button. Will she power on? There we go. The only reason it's doing that because I don't have it screwed all the way in. Uh, trying to get things in focus for you guys. I'm gonna open the drive and let's see if it reads this time. In my game, I hear spinning. I hope I don't need a controller because I don't have one. I think I need a controller uh, to hit gameplay, and I don't have one. Uh, maybe if we reset. There we go. Pink win. So it works. Yay! Uh, clearly I don't have a, I haven't used a GameCube 
so I don't know how it works, but cool. We got it working. That was pretty cool. Um, so I guess this kind of goes back into the last video where if you have a drive that doesn't work, instead of getting a new drive or a new laser, look into recapping it. Uh, in total, to be honest, the recap kit was, was probably like $5, something like that. And you can honestly probably get it cheaper if you buy, if you're willing to buy from like DigiKey or Mauser, you can buy individual parts. I'll leave a link to everything down below that you need. It's honestly not that much. Uh, you'll need a uh, multimeter to, to adjust your ohms on your potentiometer. But yeah, it's another successful console saved from death and doom and gloom. So that was cool. Um, as always, if you found this useful, have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. A like, comment, subscribe, I suppose. It's always useful. And yeah, thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. See ya.